My name is Justin Young, and welcome back to the CNT Podcast. Before we look at this actual episode, let's take a quick look of Card of the Week. Card of the Week this week is this Anthony Rizzo Auto, number one to 60. It is obviously of a player who was traded in this deadline, which is a review of what happened in this week's episode. Rizzo being on my favorite team, the Cubs, seeing him going to the Yankees really hot. Now, but I'll get more into that later. Really nice card. It's staying in the PC as Rizzo was with the Cubs for a very long time. Uh, tier 1 auto, if I didn't say before. Very nice card. If you are not watching this on YouTube, you can always go over there to see the card. Or it is posted on Cards and Talk Instagram at Cards underscore and underscore talk. Make sure to follow me there either way. Now, let's get on to the actual episode. The first trade I'm going to talk about is Chris Bryant to the San Francisco Giants. For the Giants, this is a great move as they honestly, they were able to underpay for him. And he's having a great year. This one really hurt me as a Cubs fan. Bryant's been my favorite player for the longest time. I've watched his entire career play out. Really sad to see him go. However, I am glad that he gets to have a chance to compete on a winning team to possibly win a second World Series title. However, it still hurts to see. And the Giants, the Cubs did what they should not have done. They lowered the asking price at the last minute just to be able to move on from him. And their return just was not nearly as good as it could have been. They got a better return on Rizzo. You could argue they got a better return for Jack Peterson, which I don't agree with. But it's just a lot closer of a return than it really should be for a player like Jack and a player like Chris. Really sad to see Bryant go, but... Hopefully, he can try and win a World Series with the Giants. Next up is one more of a minor trade. Jorge Soler to the Braves. The Braves made a lot of moves to a lot of players. They also got Eddie, Rosi- Ro- Eddie Rosario. I don't think a lot of it's really going to matter. I still think that they're going to get bounced round one, even if they make the playoffs. I think they will have a lot of a better chance next year when a two years back. Assuming he gets back to his be- his peak performance and not have this injury bother him long term, which I'm really hoping it doesn't because he is super fun to watch. Next up, the Mets trading for Javier Baez. This trade uh, seems good, but in reality, I don't really think it is, and here's why. Baez is a great player, but he's very similar to Lindor, who's having a down year this year. As well as the fact that adding in Baez, the Mets now have seven starting potential infielders, with only two of which could play in the outfield, with an already full outfield. Baez, it's going to be hard to make, get everyone enough playing time where everyone can be the best selves. Therefore, and they traded a very high ranked prospect in their organization, who is very young. Still, as a Cubs fan, hates to see Baez go. But this trade, it was a solid one. PCA, his nickname, is he's pretty good. I'm excited to see what he can do in future years. But still, trading the big three in Chicago really does hurt. Next up, we have a cross-town trade. The White Sox trade Nick Madrigal and Relievo for Craig Kimball. I like this trade for both teams. I think it's a win-win. The Sox get another elite bullpen arm in Craig Kimball, and they'll have him for next year as well. And the Cubs build for the future with a very solid reliever. And Nick Madrigal, who is one of my favorite players. Super excited to have him on the Cubs soon. Sadly, he is out for the rest of the year, but hopefully he makes a strong comeback next year. Uh, not insanely sad to see him relieved, because this was definitely our best return in any of them. But still sad to see Kimball go and so many pieces of the Cubs leave in the trade deadline. But this is a win-win trade for both teams. Next up, the Blue Jays overpay for barely a top 20 pitcher in Jose Bruce. They deal two top 100 prospects, including Austin Martin. I do not like this trade for Blue Jays, but I completely love it for the Twins. The Twins fleeced them 100% Austin Martin. Was going to be so good, especially with the team the Twins can build around him. I just, I'm still kind of in shock that they traded Austin Martin 
Cobranius. And that's not all. They also got a solid pitcher who's in the top 100 as well. I Honestly, if it was straight up Mures for Malton, I would still think the Twins won that trade by a landslide. Don't know what the Blue Jays were thinking. They should have held on to Martin or gotten someone a little better than Jose Barrios. Next up was Kyle Schwarber to the Boston Red Sox. This trade surprised me. I really thought the Nationals were going to be buyers and go all in to try and make another push this year. But they they trade everyone besides Soto. Schwarber, a uh, great player. I hear the Red Sox are going to try him out at first base. And I think if he can play first well that this would be a great fit for the Red Sox. Schroeder's having a career year playing out of his mind. Either way, I like this move for the Red Sox, but hopefully he can pan out at first for them, as that would be very key for them, as first base is probably the weakest position they have, except maybe starting pitching. The Dodgers, yet again, make a huge splash. They get Mad Max, Matt Scherzer, and Trey Turner. And they didn't have to give up all that much. And as you may have seen on TikTok, I commented on a video saying I would sacrifice the Dodgers for if we had to sacrifice the team. And everyone got mad at me thinking I'm just hating on the Dodgers. No, I'm not a Dodgers fan, and I do kind of hate the Dodgers. But I'm not hating on them for making all these moves. I'm hating on the fact that they have a super team because there is no salary cap. And it's starting to ruin baseball. Basketball has almost entirely been ruined for me because of super teams. And now baseball's getting there with the Dodgers just trading and signing everyone. And don't get me wrong, it's smart to build a great team. But the fact that there's no salary cap and they can just sign every player and trade for anyone is a li it's getting a little annoying. And they're just, the Dodgers are going to be running this league for a long time, no doubt. Especially when they have two top three shortstops. Arguably, I think two top five. It's just unfair for teams like the Oakland Athletics, who have who just don't bring in as, many, as much as the Dodgers with the no salary cap. And the league favors the higher end teams with the higher market. And it needs to stop. There needs to be a salary cap for every team. And I hope they implement it soon, because this is getting a little ridiculous. The Yankees then go and add left-handed power and Joey Gallo and Anthony Rizzo. Let's break down the Joey Gallo one first. They traded a lot to get him, but I think it was a good move overall. They really needed a nice power bat. However, they needed pitching, honestly, more than they needed left-handed pitting. So I think they should have gone Gallo and pitching, or Rizzo and pitching. But they got both. But I think both were pretty solid moves. Gallo obviously going to kill it for them. Great player. And then Rizzo, I shot the Cubs traded him. Also quite devastated that we traded him. However, Overtron was pretty good. Two, so, two solid, good prospects. However, we do have to pay Rizzo's salary for the rest, rest of the year. Which is tough. But overall, this is a good move by Yankees. If only they would have gotten out and gotten a top tier pitcher instead of one of them, then they would be deadly. I could see them making playoffs, and I can also see them not making it because of pitching. But overall, that was those were two good trades for them. Next up, we have the Dodgers again, no salary cap. They get Danny Duffy, who's having a very underrated year. He's been killing it. I have him in fantasy. He's been doing well for me. A good, solid pitcher to slide into that rotation. Probably not more with Max Scherzer joining. Probably going to go into that bullpen. Either way, very solid arm to have. This next one, I called it in my trade deadline predictions. The Athletics get Stalling Marte. I saw this coming from a mile away, but the A's overpaid for him heavily. They gave up way too good of a prospect for a one-year rental. Not even a full year. Even if Marte comes back to them, this was a terrible trade for them. They overpaid way too much to have in your, come in your close to winning the trade. Cruise to the Rays happened early on, uh, a few days before the deadline. Good move by the Rays. I mean, he's old and probably will retire or not re-sign. But overall, it's a good move if they really are trying to make a push, which I think they are. Then the last move I'm going to talk about is 
Slam Diego snags all-star second baseman Adam Frazier, assuming they're going to move Jake to first base to have an all-all-star infield, one of the best we've seen, with Jake at first, uh, Frazier at second, sh shortstop being Fernando Tatis and third base Manny Machado. It's very good, however, if you didn't see, oh, um, Tatis did go down with an injury last night, hoping it's not too serious. You hate to see a generational talent like him go down. Hoping he comes back soon. Thank you all for watching this week's episode of CNT. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're so close to 100. I know I've been saying it for a while, but if we can just get less than 10 people to hit that subscribe button, we'll be there. It means so much to me. Again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week.